In our last video, we shared five things you can see and do in London in one day without a car. In this video, we'll show you the easiest way to see three iconic locations outside of London. Windsor Castle, Stonehenge, and Bath. And we're seeing all of it in one day. We're Grant and Teresa Boggs. You'd normally find us exploring our new hometown of Napa, California, but we also have the travel bug. So whether we're exploring our home state, going island hopping in the Philippines, or hiking glaciers in Iceland, we're always down for a new adventure. And in this mini-series, we're exploring a place I called home for a year, the UK. Join us as we explore England and Scotland by land, by sea, sort of, and by air. Along the way, we'll share our tips on how to make your UK vacation one you'll never forget. Let's do it. One of the great things about London is that it's a super convenient home base for day trips. When Grant and I were planning our UK vacation, we knew we wanted to see Windsor Castle, Stonehenge, and Bath. One challenge was how far apart these locations were. Windsor Castle is about 25 miles from the center of London. From Windsor Castle to Stonehenge is another 68 miles. And from Stonehenge to Bath, it's another 95 miles. Luckily for us, we found a tour group to take us to all three locations from London in one day. The tour we booked was through a group called Premium Tours, and the package we picked included a guided bus tour to Windsor Castle, Stonehenge, Bath, and Laycock for £139 per person. That's about $175 US dollars. This is not a sponsored video, but I'll include a link to the package we booked in the description below. The tour started bright and early at 7.30 in the morning. The meetup point was Victoria Coach Station, not to be confused with the Victoria Underground Station, which is about a 10 minute walk away. And we made sure to get there nice and early to grab a quick breakfast at the station. After breakfast, we lined up at the departure gate and boarded our bus. It was a classic double-decker bus, and Grant and I grabbed seats upstairs for a better view. And we were on our way. Our first stop was Windsor Castle. Windsor Castle dates back to the 11th century, but it's still used today as an official royal residence. In fact, King Charles III was at the castle on the day we visited. Check out this flag, it shows that the monarch is in residence. We weren't actually allowed to take pictures inside the castle or in St. George's Chapel, which is a shame because it's so beautiful on the inside. All right, so we're here at Windsor Castle and uh, we just finished touring it. We were not allowed to take photos or video inside because it's against the rules because King Charles is actually here today. Windsor Castle is a lot bigger than I had imagined. Um, it's 18 acres of property here, over 200 rooms. We were only allowed to see a small portion. There's only a small portion that's open to the public, but um, it was it was incredibly beautiful, ornate. There was artwork that I've only seen in textbooks before or just hanging on the walls here because it's the king's dressing room or the king's closet. Um, pretty incredible. And I would say definitely a must see if you're gonna be in London take the time to head out here. It's about 20 miles outside of the city center, but definitely worth the trip. Sweet. Next, we hop back on the bus and headed to Stonehenge. The great thing about being with a tour group as opposed to visiting on your own is that once you get to the Stonehenge parking lot, you can take a free shuttle directly to the stones. If you go on your own, you'll have to make sure you get a paid ticket to take the shuttle. Otherwise, it's a 1.3 mile walk from the parking lot to the Stones one way. Stonehenge is probably the most recognizable stone circle in the world. Work on Stonehenge began about 5,000 years ago and was completed over the course of about 1,500 years. There were originally about 80 standing stones, each weighing about 25 to 30 tons. Now, why was Stonehenge built? Why did these ancient people go through all this trouble of dragging these rocks from as far as Wales to this site? Archaeologists have different theories, from Stonehenge being a druid temple to an ancient burial ground. Who knows? No matter why it was built, it's definitely worth a visit. 
And before you leave, be sure to check out the Stonehenge Visitor Center, which includes a nice gift shop and cafe. You'll definitely build up an appetite from all that sightseeing. Then it was back to the bus for us. It was about a two hour drive from Stonehenge to our third location, Bath. What's the significance of Bath? Well, it was established around the year 60 AD by the Romans, and it became known for luxurious Roman hot spring baths, hence the name Bath. And over the centuries, it became famous for its beautiful architecture using the local honey-colored limestone. It's so iconic that it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's also the one-time home of one of my favorite authors ever, Jane Austen. And for you Bridgerton or Queen Charlotte fans, we got to pass by Lady Danbury's house in Bath. So cool. The tour bus dropped us off right in the city center so we could have some free time to explore on our own. And wow, there was a lot to see. Bath Abbey, which was completed in 1611, talented street performers, the Roman baths, and plenty of shopping. My favorite place was an amazing bookstore called Topping and Company Booksellers. They have multiple levels of floor to ceiling bookshelves filled with everything from classics to contemporary literature. And of course they have a dedicated Jane Austen section. They have rolling ladders, which I love, and you can also get yourself a nice cup of tea to enjoy in one of the reading nooks or on the front porch. So I can always count on Grant to think of me. Uh, I was inside here shopping for books and he stepped out and got me a Jane Austen magnet. Isn't that cute? With our bath souvenirs in hand, we got back on the bus and headed to our last stop of the tour, a little town called Laycock. It's a beautiful historic village in its own right, but it's especially cool for any Harry Potter fans. So we're at Professor Slughorn's house. Here we are. Take a look. Laycock is also the filming location for James and Lily Potter's house. That's right, Harry Potter's childhood home. And with all that exploring, we were definitely ready for a hearty pub dinner. We headed over to Laycock's George Inn Pub, which was built in the 14th century. Our tour guide called in our food and drink orders ahead of time, so our drinks were waiting for us at the bar. Grant and I both ordered the burger, which was delicious. And for me, no meal is complete without dessert. So we crossed the street and found a cute little roadside stand called Stall in the Wall, where you can buy locally made goods like jams, preserves, and baked goods. It operates under the honor system, so you just take what you want and leave your payment of cash or PayPal. We picked up a bag of homemade fudge, and honestly, it was so good that we regretted not getting more. And so that wraps up our one day tour of Windsor Castle, Stonehenge, Bath, and Laycock. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for our next episode where we do a road trip through Scotland.